Uh, thank you for the opportunity to, to present here today. Uh, I'm here to talk about MobiQuick. Um, to begin with, uh, we'll just take a, sh a look at the market that uh, the market and the need that MobiQuick is trying to address. Um, we're in the business of payments, and of all Indian users, uh, we segment them in three categories. Users who are today digitally paying users, so that's about 35 million Indians. Uh, there's, of course, a lot more of debit and uh, debit card issuances primarily, but a lot of user behavior on, uh, for cards, uh, a lot of people who use cards use them as ATM cards, uh, more as ATM cards, and so they withdraw cash and then use it, uh, use cash at, at merchants. There's only about 35 million to 40 million people that use cards directly uh, at merchant points of sale or online. Um, there are uh, about 250, 200, 250 million in users who are already using internet. However, uh, even though they're users of the internet, they're not using electronic, uh, electronic currency of, of any kind. And then, of course, there, is, there, there are 550 million people who, uh, who, who are not even, not even on the internet. The way we uh, think about these segments is uh, we are operating today primarily on segment one, which is the digitally paying users and trying to, convey, to convert some of them from using cards to using mobile wallets. We're also, um, we, we're also targeting uh, the users who today are not digitally paying users through a number of different initiatives. Um, and, and then in the next leg, we'll, we'll look to go after the users today who don't even have internet. Hopefully, as the, as the ecosystem grows, some of them will uh, will begin begin to become internet users. The, the, the next question is, what are these people paying for, uh, especially those who are uh, digital digitally paying users as well as those who are internet users but don't pay digitally? A big big chunk of the market today, uh, as you may imagine, is mobile recharges and bill payments. Uh, that's that comprises nearly fifty percent of the addressable market that we're going for. However, we've seen new categories emerge, uh, new categories of frequent payments emerge. These are around, these are in the categories of food, um, travel. E-commerce is significant, but a lot less frequent. Uh, ra radio taxi is a big one. Um, on food payments, we find that the on food and travel payments, we find that the shift from non-digitally paying uh, transactions to digitally paying transactions is is uh, is showing very rapid growth. These are also examples of transactions that occur very frequently. So someone basically goes to a restaurant very often. People are using grocery um, ordering apps and do that very often. Uh, but then people also going to restaurants physically is a use case, and we're seeing um, very, frequent, uh, uh, very frequent usage of the mobile wallet there. What does MobiQuick do? Where are we today? Uh, 20 million users and about 55,000 retailers, a little bit more than 50,000. We're the largest independent network connecting users to these merchants. And our users are very highly active users. We have millions of users who open up the app every day um, to, to do payments, to check uh, merchant offers, to check, uh, uh, to, to, to check their transaction histories, et cetera. On the merchant side, so we're two-sided platform. One side, we have users. On the other side, we have merchants. MobiQuick is universally accepted on more than 50,000 retailers. It's about 55,000 today. We, we are working with category leaders in every segment. Uh, we had started our journey with the online segment, uh, but we are increasingly present now even on the offline segment. 
uh, on shopping, we're present on Big Bazaar as well as W. H. Smith, which is a uh, which is a retail chain that has outlets at every metro station uh, and and also the airports. We are live also across many uh, uh, many merchants who between themselves would be competitors. So we're live on Mintra and Jabong on eBay and Shop Clues. Similarly for travel, food, entertainment, and others. In terms of the type of usage behavior that, that MobiQuick enables, um, we already spoke about how we solve friction for people who are already digitally paying users. So we ease, uh, you know, I think users do not have to go through 2FA, so it's a better and more seamless flow. Uh, there's a number of things that we do to make sure that the user's uh, payment, be, uh, payment experience is, is seamless, which includes special merchant in integrations. Uh, we are also converting a lot of users to digitally paying users. MobiQuick, is, uh, MobiQuick can now directly be topped up with cash at merchant outlets. And uh, an initiative which is being rolled out in phases is already currently live in Delhi and Bombay is uh, the cash top up option, uh, sorry, cash pickup option, where you can ask for somebody to come pick up cash and the person uh, and, and a MobiQuick agent would show up at wherever you are, at your, you know, at your office location or any other location you may be, uh, and takes cash from you, loads up your wallet right then and there and all of this with an SLA of 30 minutes. So we are seeing uh, a, a rapid adoption of uh, the wallet in the segment that wasn't digitally paying until now. Um, we, we are seeing a lot of users join, the, uh, join MobiQuick uh, or use MobiQuick for the first time who don't have any cards saved with us. And that tells us that you know, these are people who are becoming digitally paying consumers for the first time. Mobi MobiQuick also enables loyalty points to be uh, redeemed uh, within MobiQuick, and it, 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 ma it makes them a lot more liquid. So we've tied up with Payback, which is India's largest uh, uh, collaboration uh, loyalty program. Uh, we see a very, very strong adoption of MobiQuick by Payback users and vice versa. On in terms of how the, the app, the, 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 the value that, the, uh, that MobiQuick as an app provides to merchants, given that we have millions of users using the app every day, uh, we, we're turning into a very strong merchant discovery platform. Um, and uh, you know, I think uh, the, the power of the MobiQuick merchant, plat uh, the merchant discovery platform is getting rolled out. Uh, we had started with um, a, a, a basic merchant discovery, um, a, a basic merchant discovery interface, which was received very well, both by merchants as well as consumers. And now we're building on top of it. We also do about a million. Uh, MobiQuick users also do about a million P2P transfers every month, uh, and so we are also seeing people use the wallet. For all, for all kinds of micropayment use cases, such as uh, you know, settling uh, restaurant bills between each other whenever a group goes out to eat at restaurants. So we're, we're seeing a lot of 50 rupees, 100 rupees kind of uh, money exchanges that are occurring between our users using, using the MobiQuick P2P uh, capabilities. In terms of where we are headed, our goals for 2018, um, we want to pro we, we we think we we would easily be able to process about five billion dollars of worth of payments. Uh, we'll probably be uh, we, we'll probably have a user base of 150 million users, and upwards of uh, 500,000 merchants. We will also be the largest database of digital transactions in India. Uh, just seeing uh, the volume of transactions that already occur on MobiQuick on a daily basis, uh, these are, uh, th th these are uh, realistic goals for, uh, for ourselves to set uh, from a two-year time, time horizon. 
Mobiquick was, uh, the, uh, these are the founders of Mobiquick. Bipin is, uh, uh, Bipin is a, an engineer from IIT Delhi, an electrical engineer. And uh, he was then in chip design before he founded Mobiquick. Upasna uh, went to Stanf Stanford, uh, worked at PayPal, uh, then returned to India and joined hands with Bipin uh, in, f in founding Mobiquick. Uh, we've got a fairly strong management team. Uh, Virinder is uh, the he head of engineering, comes from, uh, used to be VP products at, uh, at Make My Trip. Saurabh has worked at, uh, Saurabh, who's the CMO, has worked at uh, uh, Exigo as well as Maruti Suzuki. Uh, strong, uh, strong back background, both in brand as well as digital and performance marketing. Um, I started out as a as an as an engineer and then moved to the business side before becoming uh, become becoming an entrepreneur, and uh, joined Mobiquick after selling off my earlier business. I'll stop there. If you have any questions, I'll be glad to take them. So, how yeah. do you see the payment bank affecting your business? Yeah. So, I think the payment banks are a. a I would say a good thing long term because they allow uh, payments businesses to do uh, two, three things. One, they allow end users to convert their uh, wallet or instrument balance directly into cash. And they allow the, uh, the, the, the payment bank entities to earn a little bit more on the value that's, uh, that's stored in the in, in the payment instrument. So long term, they're a good thing. Uh, in the short term, uh, there's a lot of challenges in setting up a payment bank which is similar to ours. These challenges are around how do you do a KYC for a customer and get them to transact for more than 10,000 rupees. These challenges are around uh, you know, a number of regulatory constraints that are, be, uh, that are put on, um, that, that are put on pay, payment bank entities. Um, in terms of the equity structure, in terms of what they can issue, in, in, in terms of the spends that they can have on marketing. So uh, I, I'd say in the long term, it's the, the payment banks are a great step for the industry. And what the RBI has done with the guidelines that have been issued, and as well as their advisory that payments bank will be available on, on tap, is that you know, it's, it's paved the way for the, for, and it's, it's made a, a kind of structure for the industry to grow, and that's a terrific thing. Whether Payments Bank will really create any kind of change in you know, three to five years, uh, like in, in three, four years, I don't think so, because licenses alone don't create change. You need to have uh, really good technology and business models. Those are the things that create change. So um, in, in summary, good thing from a long-term perspective, not sure, you know how, how how much of a good thing they are in the short term. Would you want to be one at some stage? At some stage, yes, absolutely. So uh, you know, all banks or the top two technology payment savvy banks are creating their own wallets. Now it's not that segment that is addressing that we pointed out, but gradually as more people get access to formal banking, so you know. So <clears throat> I, uh, I, I think your first point is around the fact that you know, the, the, the field is becoming more competitive is spot on. And I think what it also tells you is that the opportunity that the wallets are going after is so massive that the big guns are beginning to take note. So uh, I completely agree with you there. Where I think things are less clear is that as businesses look to turn themselves into te technology-enabled businesses, or you know, it's it's one thing to have technology; it's another thing to be a technology-oriented business, right? Like, MobiQuick is uh, is we we are we 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 are a tech company at uh, at our heart. What that means is very different things in terms of how we operate versus how a big bank or a big corporate would op operate. So, for instance, we have a new product release every three weeks. 
Um, and the pace of innovation is frenetic. Um, it's, it's, it's very, very rapid. Now, is that a culture? That's a culture, that's a seismic shift for a big corporate to undergo, to, to come up with, like, with, with technology uh, shifts or to, to come up with new pro, uh, product enhancements on a three-week basis. Um, and you know, what that tells you is that for anyone to compete with MobiQuick or technology-enabled businesses on the basis of technology, they have to replicate some of the, the, the way the team is structured or the way the, the business is structured and put, put tech at the forefront. There, you know, I see the the big uh, the, the the big players being much less uh, flexible and being much less technology led. Does that uh, answer your question? So um, I, I think, yes, the ticket sizes are moving up. When and how and when exactly will they get to the 2,000 and, 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 and the 5,000? That's still, a, still an open question. Um, but you know, I think a lot of the comments that are also being made, while they're accurate, they don't tell you the entire story. And the story is that if you see transactions that are recharged transactions, which is still an anchor for a, a lot of the wallets, the, the average recharge transactions, transactions will be 50 rupees, 60 rupees, 100 rupees, right? I think that, that's, that's the behavior of the Indian user. And you know, if wallets are capturing a big chunk of that and banks are missing out on it, then that can't necessarily be such a great thing for the banks. Now, what you do see is that on merchant transactions, ticket sizes are a lot larger their you know, orders of magnitude larger than recharge transactions. So the same user who trusted a wallet with a 50 rupee payment for recharges now sees, you know, we, this, uh, now thinks, well, this is a wallet that gives me more convenience, the flows are better, and you know, it's, it's right here at my finger, fingertips on my mobile. So the next time I'm doing, let's say, you know, an e-commerce transaction somewhere or a taxi uh, payment, or if I'm booking a movie ticket, why not just use my wallet? And so as that begins to happen, you, the, the relationship of, uh, of, of a user starts to get cemented with, with MobiQuick. That should be a source of worry for the, for the banks. And I think uh, the fact that, uh, so it's, it's one thing for them to, like, I, I think they may say one thing, but you know, I think the banks are also coming up with, with their wallets. And that obviously means that you know, they don't believe in their own argument wholeheartedly. Yeah, so predominantly today, uh, wallet top-ups happen through debit cards. Uh, credit card issuance is really small, and uh, that also shows up in terms of the number of uh, top-up transactions that happen in, 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 in MobiQuick wallets. Um, so I think that um, uh, having said that, right, I think the universe of people who are comfortable using debit cards for non-ATM transactions is still 40 million. What, 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 what that tells me is that anyone who's trying to solve an electronic uh, payments business in India needs to go after cash. And so I think that I, I believe a lot more innovation will come on how to turn the cash directly into some form of digital currency. And honestly, I think uh, you know, some banks may even try to make debit cards you know, friendlier. Um, but I, but, but I, I see, let's say, I, I see debit card usage in, on, on merchants growing up something like 10, 10, 12, 15%. But then I also see disruptive players uh, using mobile technology trying to you know, attack 
you know, this other 200, 200 million people who are already digital, digitally paying, uh, who are already internet enabled, but don't have a digital instrument to pay with. Uh, so, uh, I, 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 so I'll answer that question slightly differently, right? So the, 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 the metric that we look at is that what is the ratio of one top up to number of transactions that it supports, right? And you know, that's way above one. So if that, if, if that ratio were one, what that would tell me is that a person is only you topping up the wallet to do that one transaction because there's some kind of promotion. The behavior that we've been seeing is that, uh, you know, one top up supports multiple transactions, and that number is only increasing every month. Um, so does that give you? Does that so answer? What I wanted to understand was when a customer comes to Mobile Pay, is he using only one source of value, or for example, I go with my credit card, debit card, multiple different sources come into top up your wallet when a customer comes to you? Yeah. So typically, uh, you know, I think the average ratio of you know, so there's there's a lot of customers that are topping up with only one instrument, but you know a lot of our most frequent customers do top up with multiple instruments. Uh, these days, we saw see a lot of our regular customers also trying out cash. Yeah, so um, the so the lens we see is do we see average wallet balances increasing? That's the lens we look at. So it is increasing, um, and, uh, and 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 essentially the pattern that we are seeing is as we are increasing the use cases, as we increase that merchant universe, uh, the the more we increase it, basically the more comfortable people are keeping uh, uh, people are keeping larger and larger amounts. So I th um, it's a, it's, it's a there, there are two parts of answering that question, right? I think one part is that people that have a lot of cards and, and, and users who have a lot of accounts, long term, I, I, I mean, I think a lot of those users will also not see a huge amount of value other than sh merely the convenience of having something on their mobile phones and being able to do that. A lot of the value actually will come when you convert people who are not digitally paying into digitally paying users. So if so, I have you know two three of these cards, right? If I am, am I the ideal customer for MobiQuick? The answer to that is no. Um, so so that's that that's one bit. And the fact of the matter is that if MobiQuick is the first and the easiest way for a person who is becoming a digitally paying user for the very first time, then what we've observed is that relationship is sticky. It's very sticky. It's hard for anyone to shake, uh, shake that user. Um, coming back to the fact that there's a proliferation of wallets, I think what happens is that even though there's a lot many wallets that are being introduced, still I think uh, if, you, if you look at simply the user base, or uh, that will give you a view of, of how, how the wallets are doing. Now, a lot of the wallets that are today out there are, are, that, that have come up, MobiQuick adds their entire user base or you know, multiples of their entire user base in a month. So 
I think there's something, that, 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 you know, I think people ignore the product aspect, which is really important. Uh, the product and the, and, and the usability and user experience. What, what, what may well happen is if you are already an HDFC account holder, then you may try the HDFC wallet. If you are already an ICICI account holder, then you would, you would try the ICICI wallet. From, from the merchant side? Well, I think uh, for a lot of the very widely used uh, use cases, such as uh, recharges, that margin is coming down. Uh, that's correct. But you know, for a lot of the other merchant transactions, that margin isn't. So it's it it's a it's a classic question of you know how how is the you know power of uh, how powerful is the merchant in that ecosystem, which governs that. Um, but if the question is around revenue models, and if the question is that, is this the only way we'll earn money? This is the way we are starting to make money. Uh, there will be a lot more revenue channels. Uh, yeah, sure. No, no worries. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Uh, that's, I mean, I think like that's a good question for Paytm to answer. Sure. But <laughs> <laughs> uh, having said that, I think um, uh, it's uh, in the in the industry. It's always good to have a neutral way of uh, of verifying numbers, mm -hmm. and uh, I'd say you know that a good way of verifying who has how many users is the Google Play Store, and that doesn't lie. Uh, so the, 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 there are, that is one, but that's not very significant. Uh, and I think the recharges cannot be ignored, right? I think this is a country where, uh, if you, uh, where, where prepaid mobile um, uh, minutes are prevalent. Yeah. And to load up your wallet, you have to go to a small retailer or you have to you know, physically travel somewhere. That, that, that was the, that, that's the other world. Uh, and that's not a convenient thing to do. So uh, the, the, I, I'd say that the larger force here is uh, you know, solving the problem of mobile recharges as an anchor use case based on which we can build a payments, uh, a payments platform. Um, the second factor, authentication, helps, but it's not that big of a deal. Right, uh, sorry, there's one. Um, so um, not tying up with a payments bank. If you were a payment bank yourself, right, uh, you could expect to earn you know about two to three percent more than what you do today. Um, well, you know maybe three percent is a lot. Maybe you earn like one and a half, two percent more. Uh, but I think it just helps the economics of the business uh, in, in in a long term sense. But then I think there's there's always a catch with these things. The other thing is that. Uh, there are very specific kinds of securities that that money can be invested in. Um, and so all of those have to be set up to even earn that one and a half, two percent. Great, any final questions? No.
No, so I think you may be talking about the pay, pay, pay TM e-commerce model. Um, and uh, uh, and um, I, I mean, I think like different companies have different philosophies. They may think of it as enabling their vendors. Uh, we think about that model as competing with your merchants. Um, so that's not a path that, uh, you know, we do not want to go down the e-commerce path. I s I'd seen one other question in, in one of those two table tables, yeah. We do some discounting, not a not like uh, uh, not of the order of magnitude that that Paytm does. So uh, you, you know, I think there's many different interesting ways of doing discounting where you can drive the same amount of behavior without spending a large amount of money. So uh, you know, I think we choose to be a lot lot more careful uh, with the money we spend. We've also gone to this gotten to this scale with uh, orders of magnitude lesser money than other other players have. Um, so, so that's that's one thing. I think the other thing uh, to bear in mind also, as as, as people think about discounts, is uh, is that um, this is al this is almost the money that you spend on acquiring a relationship. And so, if you if you get a user in your system, there's you know some kind of a lifetime value of that user to you. And so, if you're spending a small fraction of the li lifetime value of the user on acquiring and retaining that user, then presumably that should be okay. But I think you've got to think that through, and uh, it shouldn't just be, uh, you know, throwing out random numbers. So I'm sure Paytm has done its own math because they have two, three businesses that they run. Uh, but that's the way that's the way we look at it. 